Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Mr. Dogboat333, and welcome to the new campaign trail. This is a game originally created by, uh, I think it's Dan Bryan. That's it, Dan Bryan. Original site's over here, uh, which you can check out if you want to. I'll make sure to include the link down the token box below. I'm charging my phone. You're good, man. You're good. Um, this is a new kind of nifty little update to it uh for those of you who don't know what the game is it's uh it's a what it's a uh, election uh simulator uh so you hop in various elections uh, just to uh, give it a uh uh give it a shot to see whether or not you can uh win it or not uh so various elections there's 2020 most recent one 2016 some more uh, recent ones, as well as uh, some more f interesting and contentious ones. 1960, uh, 68, 88, even all the way back to 1844. I've played this game on stream a bit before. I don't think I've ever uploaded it to YouTube, though. And um, it's kind of a bit of a resurgence. I first found about, out, out about it from Mr. Beat, but a couple other people have played it as of late. And, uh, it's getting a bit of a resurgence, so I, I figured I'd give it a shot. And, you know, since I can't escape it, uh, even though I've taken a bit of a break, there is a TNO scenario where you can play the, uh, TNO 1964 election. Now, it's only Johnson versus, uh, Wallace. We have a couple different options uh, uh, to play around with this, and it's pretty fun, I think, personally. So, we can go ahead and select the mod loader. What do I want to pick as my BP? I'll just do Musky, the base game. You'll never escape, pretty much. So, we'll go ahead and launch that up, and let's click it again. <coughs> America is a radically different nation than four years ago. With the Civil Rights Act, South African War, Nixon's resignation, and Kennedy's assassination, America will be electing new leadership. The Republican Democrats have nominated Senate Majority Leader Lyndon B. Johnson after a brutal convention. Johnson has to unite his party conservatives and keep liberals in line, all while not losing moderates. The NPP has nominated fiery governor of Alabama, George Wallace. Wallace has to put aside the perceptions that he's a radical and keep his base in line in order to find a way to win the White House. So, go ahead and continue. So, we can select between Wallace and Johnson, although they only have content for uh, Johnson, I believe. So, select uh, Lyndon Johnson, uh, the uh, RD Coalition, from home, his home state of Texas. Lyndon Baines Johnson is a Senate Majority Leader from the state of Texas and is chief, and the chief architect of the Civil Rights Act. He was at one, one time a close ally of President Nixon, but broke with him once Nixon, Nixon's corrupt actions were revealed. Johnson is an advocate for greater domestic liberalism, or as he calls it, a great society. However, he has an intense battle for the nomination with conservative Wallace Bennett and his Western Democrats. He'll need to unite his party on issues like South Africa and economics while still defeating the odious Wallace, who has support from union voters and the Solid South. Excellent. We have a couple different options, which we can select as we find necessary. Um, we have to just select a, a different a mod loader for them, though. Um, we're going to go with uh, Edmund Muskie, I believe, is the, uh, Wallace's uh, VP in the base game. So, Edmund Sixtus Muskie. That's an amazing middle name, Sixtus. Current senator and former governor of Maine. He is one of the last Eastern liberals who is a Democrat. Due to his Democratic affiliation, he will keep many of Wallace Bennett's supporters at bay, and due to his liberalism, he will keep the party base happy. However, the state of Maine isn't worth many electoral votes, and even then, you could still end up losing to Wallace with him as VP. Then again, we could lose without him. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and continue. We're going to do the winner take all, uh, normal difficulty. Let's do it. Fun fact, LBJ's genitals were, and balls were so big that his pants had to be specially tailored to give him an extra couple inches of space. Yep, that, that's why they called him Jumbo.
So we gotta load up the electoral map. And this is the start of the starting situation. Now real quick, I'm gonna go ahead So this is sort of our uh, starting situation. Um, the South is pretty deeply uh, NPP, uh, though Texas is a pretty solid uh, bastion for us, fortunately. Uh, the RDs are doing well in the Northeast for the most part, though Maine is a little tight. Uh, New Hampshire is a little tight. The West Coast is pretty close, although we do have a lead in California, which is going to be a pretty important state. The Midwest leans NPP. But, uh... We're doing pretty, uh, okay overall. So, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and get back to chat real quick. So... February 1962, President Nixon has announced they will begin defunding NASA. Will you publicly support him, oppose him, or stay silent on the issue? So we have a couple different options. Uh, we can not comment on an, the issue, public back Nixon on the issue, or make a statement stating my disagreement with Nixon on this. So we're going to make a, a statement stating my disagreement with President Nixon on this. Even if Germany has reached the moon, we must follow the American spirit and never give up. The rewards of funding NASA could be great. To most Americans, this seems like a dubious remark, but this will certainly help you later on the campaign trail, especially with people like John Glenn campaigning for you. It's funny how California is pretty right-wing in Tino, but it makes sense because of, yeah, treaty ports. That's mainly why. Um, it's also, I mean... The three presidents who've been from California, historically, Herbert Hoover, um, why am I blanking? Uh, Richard Nixon, and Ronald Reagan. And you cannot really call any of them left-wing. So, Sir Bushman to the moon and back. So, that kind of helps us a little bit. February 1962, MLK Jr. has just made a speech that has been dubbed the I Have a Dream speech, which is bolstered the case of civil rights in the Senate. Do you have a reaction to the speech? Um, let's not comment on the message in public. Dr. King knows we support civil rights, but we can't risk alienating the Southern Bloc if we want to pass civil rights. So let's go ahead and do that. This is disappointing some civil rights leaders in private, but they know well enough not to say anything publicly, which will not cause an issue. So we can choose a campaign in some states. Um, this will help us a little bit in these uh, whichever state we want. Um, let's go ahead. Can jump out now. Break breaks up now. All right. Well, thanks for hopping as long as you did, Kev. Let's go ahead head to uh, Illinois. Michael Arrington. A prominent leader of the NPPC has released a book called The Other America talking about poverty in the United States to raise awareness on this issue. Do you have any other comments on the book? Take care, lads. I'll see you around, Kev. Thanks for hopping in. Yes, I do, in fact. We can capitalize on this book to help increase support for our domestic programs throughout the nation and thereby increase our presidential chances. We'll go on a speaking tour talking about poverty as a whole and how we can lower it. I can relate to those who are in poverty because of my humble background. This is a great move politically. Even if you aren't great at speaking, your words and background still click with audiences. Ooh. America has recently learned of a German spy caught by the Nixon administration who, believe, who may have had ties to Francis Parker Yockey. Many RDs across the nation are claiming this as such. And if the public believed it, this would certainly hurt the NPP. On the other hand, NPP supporters are claiming that it is just Japanese and leftist propaganda. Time will tell what the nation believes. So, this is a RNG one. Depending on which one we select, this will help us or hurt us. Now, you can inspect element if you want to be really metagamey. And uh, figure out which code has it. Although, I don't know how pro or against you guys would be for that. Uh, we'll try to play legit, legitly, starting off. 
We'll make no comment on the matter, but let's hope this outcome favors the RDs. Come on. Yes! Luckily for you, it favored the RDs. And they have gained significantly in the polls. Meanwhile, the MVP is facing issues since it's one of the most what it's one of its most well-known members members is believed to have been a traitor you can do what now I'll, I'll show you it uh real quick uh whenever we get to the next option it's like that so, so that helps us by how much that's a little bit unclear um so let's work on probably working on Kentucky potentially I think we can hopefully uh, swap that over let's visit Kentucky President Nixon has recently put sanctions on President Burnham of Guyana after his recent op actions of seizing political opponents however he's been criticized for not going far enough in his actions what's your opinion on the matter found still mobile most likely be coming on the six well uh, you can figure this out uh, as we uh I'll, I'll show you what I mean when we get to it while I respect President Nixon, I disagree with him on this. I believe the President should have been more aggressive in dealing with President Burnham's legal actions. At the time, he received criticism from members of the party regarding this, and President Nixon can't, couldn't hide his displeasure over this. However, due to what happens next, this remark is a small boon. Breaking news. Although Nixon has secured a win in Guyana, there have been anonymous leaks to major newspapers that Nixon and the FBI worked together to wiretap political opponents, as well as an alleged blackmail file. After a few days of running around, a reporter has finally caught up to you and has asked you what your opinion on the matter is. You know, I firmly believe in the principle of judgment with evidence. Until there's evidence regarding this alleged information, it would be wrong to make an official opinion. There were squirms at the Nixon White House, and many RD politicians were quite upset with you, but this is more in tune with the mood of the nation. Ooh. I'm starting to get um, these uh, more Midwestern states leaning RD, which is nice to see. Nixon wiretapping? No way, I know. Hard to believe. Let's work on Kentucky. Multiple NPP politicians and leaders from Hubert Humphrey and Michael Harrington to George Wallace and Jesse Helms are now calling for the impeachment of Richard Nixon after the multiple leaks. Do you support impeachment? Now, I'll only be, making, be able to make an official judgment if the House brings forward articles of impeachment. Until then, I have no comment on the matter. Nixon scorned you for this, and the Republican senators are furious that they have no cover to hide behind during all of this, but this might be the best answer for your public image. Imagine he actually did, I know. A war in South Africa has begun. Invasion by the Boer administration of the Nazi foothold in Africa on South Africa has put them on offensive. President Nixon has decided to send U.S. troops to fight in the South African war. Do you agree with this? Oh, totally. I applaud President Nixon standing against fascism by sending troops to help our ally in South Africa. We must preserve and protect democracy wherever it's established by all means necessary. And we'll go ahead and see what happened. Um... Well, it generally looks like most of these places... Maine opposes the South African War, which is a little... A lot of these uh, New England states seem to oppose it. Although, they're leaning RD pretty heavily, so it won't matter too much. Yeah, so it makes sense. Let's go back to the game. Nixon's following Sousa in logic. Go to work in Spoonberg to avoid impeachment. <laughs> if only that actually worked out. This is a standard position, even with the RDs, and the war with South Africa is probably popular. There we go. So we're losing a little bit on the coast. Um, we might want to go ahead and campaign a little bit. Probably in Oregon. President Nixon has announced the U.S. is removing special draft exemptions. Although the war is still popular, discontent has risen over this. What's your opinion on this? I'm opposed to his decision by President Nixon. I believe that some people, quite frankly, need exemptions from the draft and fairly deserve them. The Nixon White House is upset by a response. This isn't necessarily a bad idea. President Nixon has recently announced that after 20 years of not recognizing either Indian country, they are recognizing the Republic of India, one of the few democracies left on, the, on continental Asia. Do you support this decision? Why not? No campaign in the Midwest. Um... 
I'll probably get there a little bit in a little bit. Well, absolutely. It's beyond point that we recognize one of the last three nations in Asia. They are the legitimate Asian of India instead of the two Japanese puppet nations. I fully support President Nixon on this decision. Let's pop your sentiment across, and this move will be already is across the nation. Um, might want to work a little Illinois. It was looking a little bit closer for us, but it's leaning more towards Wallace now, so... Breaking news, President Nixon has resigned the President of the United States. Vice President Kennedy now will take the office of President. It's also emerged that you were instrumental in making him resign of the old, in an Oval Office meeting. I will not rumor, comment on rumors, but I wish President Nixon the best in California. This is all you can say. The backlash of Nixon resigning is muted somewhat by your role in making him resign. You can take Cali or did I went blind? Um, ooh, breaking news out of Dallas. President John F. Kennedy, newly inaugurated, has been shot by a Guinness nationalist. This comes on the heels of President Nixon's resignation, meaning that Speaker of the House John McCormick will become president. Crazy time. I send my deepest condolences to former President Kennedy's family, including his wife Jackie and his brother Bobby. He was a great man, and this legacy shall not be forgotten. This is a tragedy that has shocked the American public, but cynically, this will help you politically. Um, doesn't look like it's helping me too much, though. Jesus. Um, we'll hope we can get the West Coast back. Um, meanwhile, I will work on Illinois. Congratulations, you defeated Wallace F. Bennett at the 1964 RD convention to be the nominee. What will you say as you accept the nomination of your party? We still have to hold on to the RDs, because uh, we have the Democrats here. This is probably going to alienate them a bit too much. I will thank the convention for nominating me to be president. We'll put out an all branch of the supporters of Bennett by talking about the importance of pragmatism and moderation. The bush for some programs, but in a way that doesn't cause a huge ruckus in the country. Many of your liberals who are key to your nomination, like George McGovern, are disheartened by the statement, but this may be the best way to appeal to conservative Bennett supporters. You've chosen Ed Muskie of the state of Maine to be your VP. Can you talk more about him? Ed Muskie has served the people of Maine well, and I'm proud to have him on the ticket. Notwithstanding your previous rivalries with each other, Muskie is a liberal, but still a Democrat, thus satisfying most party members. There we go, and we have turned things around pretty well. Though Illinois is still a little too contentious for my liking. I want Victoria 3 to come out sooner. Oh, let's head up to Washington, though. After a tough battle, George Wallace has emerged victorious at the MPB convention over Scoop Jackson and Michael Harrington. Do you have any comment on Wallace? Well, let's look at Governor Wallace's records. He says he will fight for the unions and the common man. However, in his tenure as governor of Alabama, Alabama has remained a right-to-work state. They have the highest rates of poverty in the nation, with one of the lowest health care coverage rates. Simply put, Governor Wallace is all talk and no action. This is kind of a tactic that will help you against Wallace. This will get you big gains with the working class of America. Despite the Civil Rights Act of 1962, many important black leaders in America are calling for further civil rights legislation. What's your opinion on this? Well, I fully agree with him. Even though the Civil Rights Act was great, we need further laws regarding fair housing, voting rights, and more. It's helping a little base, but it certainly hurt, hurt in the South. Although, we're getting pretty close to flipping Washington. Nevada will probably hang on to. We're doing okay in these more Midwesty states. Um, I'm optimistic about not being able to worry too much about Indiana. Let's work on Kentucky again. Despite the overall success of OVN troops in South Africa, there is much rising discontent with the war, which has led to so many casualties and so much death. Do you support the war in South Africa? Even if there can be much great pain and sometimes suffering, our goal is truly just. We are fighting against a country that which has abhorrent practices of killing men and women and even children for the color of their skin and forcing others into slavery. Go Pennsylvania. Well, actually, true, Pennsylvania is a little bit. Still leaning NPP. 
This is expected response from me, but even then, many liberals can't help but squirm. President McCormick just announced that he will not pardon former President Nixon and called him crook. Do you agree with the president's decision? Let's see real quick. These states want justice, justice, moderate. I think it'll help us more to uh, go after it. Absolutely, I do. President Nixon's actions were appalling and criminal and should be dealt with as such. It's generally the more popular stance nationwide. There we go. We've got Pennsylvania, although I don't know what's going on in Illinois. Really. You just might not be able to win Illinois. But I'll keep working on it. Just give up on the Deep South. That's what, yeah, I'm not hopeful about it. I think we can hang on to Missouri, possibly flip uh, Kentucky. If we went with Gore, we'd have a decent chance in Tennessee as well. Um, let's work on Kentucky. Let's do uh, Illinois. Despite rising discontent with war, Ofen and South African forces have been making ga big gains in South Africa, including the recent capture of a city of v Vindhoek. Hurrah to our boys fighting the jackboots. This will certainly help you and your party in the campaign. There we go. It's time for ad season. What ads will you air? Hmm. Let's attack Walsh's record as governor of Alabama on economic issues. He's kept it a right-to-work state, hasn't lowered poverty or increased jobs drastically as he promised, and he hasn't improved the infrastructure of the state of Alabama. Walsh is making promises with an empty record. The attack hits well more g voters. Learn about Walsh's record as governor. Starting to win mostly on the West Coast, although Pennsylvania is a little bit too close for comfort. I'll hope that we can hang on to it. In ads, G Governor George Wallace has been emphasizing his opposition to Washington, D.C. corruption. He's attacking your affiliation with Bobby Baker and Billy Sol Estes. God damn it. Regrettably, the scandal will hurt you a bit in the polls. It's not too bad, though. Not too bad. The Washington is being weird. The weeks before the election, Senator Hubert Humphrey of Minnesota, one of the last remaining members of the NPC Senators, has crossed party lines and endorsed your campaign. Do you have any comment? Well, we thank Senator Humphrey for his endorsement. This is further evidence that we are the candidate of reason and moderation, while Wallace is too radical to be president. This will give you a boost in the industrial and farm states. There we go, though Wisconsin is a little close. Still. We'll visit Maryland. Yeah, we'll do Maryland. Both Senators Scoop Jackson and author Michael Harrington, members of the MPB Center, are reluctant to endorse George Wallace. However, due to differences, you may only be able to get one to endorse you. Who will you try to appeal to? We'll appeal to Michael Harrington, we'll emphasize over and over again how our domestic liberal credentials and talk about both our domestic policies are very similar. We'll also talk about Wallace's racism and how Alabama's a right-to-work state. I don't know if either of these other two have worked, but when I've done test games, the Harrington is a something you can definitely get. The Harrington endorsements. Luckily, Harrington soon announces that he supports your presidential campaign. This will help you in farm states, the East, and the Great Lakes. There we go. Okay, Kalinka, I will show you what I mean real quick. Um, so, back to the game. A few days before the presidential election, there is a televised debate that is held. The big three networks have organized it and are inviting you and Governor Walls to debate it. With Walls accepting, will you intend? So, if you inspect elements... It will tell you... They're, they're uh, tied to a certain value. So, for example, I'm looking on the t uh, Reddit for it. 
Uh, two is the one we want to get, because this is the uh, one coded for the better one. So we get out of that and continue. We've bested Vault Walls, and we've won the debate. Beautiful. Ooh. Wallace Johnson. This is a pretty close one, especially in these states up here. Bro, that's so scummy. It is totally scummy. Um, you, you were just curious, so I, I just showed it to you. It's also probably realistically with some of these tough ones, like uh, 72 McGovern, the only way you could really win. So. Um, I'll visit Washington. This campaign is coming to a close. Where do you want to visit before Election Day? Iowa... Minnesota into Illinois. We already got these two, and I don't think we're getting Illinois. Sadly. Campaign these. Maryland to Pennsylvania to New Jersey. Maryland. Could make a difference. Pennsylvania, New Jersey. I don't think we can end up getting Washington. We might lose out on Ohio. Same with Wisconsin, although we will hold on to get Indiana and Michigan, so that would help. Missouri campaign, a little bit too late for that one. Might be able to uh, lock in Maryland. So we'll give that a shot. Good luck, Senator Johnson, and may God be with you tomorrow. Election eyes arrive, settle in, and wait for the turns, however long it may take. Best of luck. Let's see what we got. Results are uh, slowly piling in. 10% of the votes are in. 12% are in. Vermont and Georgia forward in. Wallace has a bit of a lead. South Carolina flips, not a big surprise. Virginia, deep south is not surprising me at all right about now. Starting to get some more electoral votes to help us out. We flipped Ohio. I'm pleasantly surprised about that. We got Jersey. We got Texas. That's a big one. Pennsylvania and New York, we have secured. We got Maryland. That I think that uh, visit secured us. We didn't get Illinois. That's one of the bigger ones. Would have been nice to get. We got Missouri, though. Montana, Utah. We've won the election already. With all that. Let's see how much we end up winning by. I think we're in a decent position to get the rest of these. I'm not sure about Wisconsin. I don't think we'll get uh, Washington. Maybe not Nebraska or Idaho, though. But the rest, I feel good about. We got Nebraska, actually. The question is going to be, yep. There we go. 358 to 176. GG's. We'll go to the final results. We won the 1964 election. Hopefully the Republicans and NBP Center have solid control of the Congress so you can pass your ambitious domestic agenda. You can take many turns to solve the premier issues of the day. Civil rights, health care, education, welfare, and the environment. However, you must also be tactful. If you do things too quickly, you could alienate the public and end up destroying your party and allowing the NPP far right to win in 68. However, for now, celebrate your victory and get ready to enter the White House. I don't even know the last time I'm a Democrat got Nebraska. Depends on how you want to categorize it. Statewide, it was 64 in the Goldwater campaign. Last time electoral vote went from Nebraska, went to a Democrat, uh, 2020. 
Let's do, uh, take another gander of his election map. That is beautiful right there. Might go ahead, us. That's not how I wanted it to go. That's better. Um, probably done a few, could have done a few more campaigns. Illinois, potentially. Probably the same with Washington. Actually, Washington would have been pretty close. Let's do uh, results by state. Let's look at the closest states. Nebraska was very close. Decided by 3,000 votes. Wisconsin, about 11,000. Washington, about 9,000. Missouri, 20,000. Wyoming, 2,000. So close, uh, percentage-wise, at least. Let's check the closest jo uh, Johnson win. Yeah, okay. Nice. I guess highest percentage is kind of cool. Let's go closest uh, wins. Oklahoma. It's relatively close for Illinois, at least. And then the most important states we get you locked down. Let's take a look at this one more time. There we go. Not even that close. Well, final election results. Uh, we won by about, actually exactly by 3% of the popular vote. And, um, yeah. So, um, this was a new campaign trail. Um, I'll make sure to include the uh, link down in the description below, box below if you want to check it out. It's a good amount of fun. I'm probably going to play a little bit more of this, especially since we're uh, inching into midterms. So, for percentage in Georgia, 30%. I will check Georgia for you, good sir. Um... About 25%, it looks like, or closer to 25 than 30. 23%, if I do my math correctly. So, this was the new campaign trail. Um, it's for free, if you want to check it out. Um, if you like this video, leave a like. Now feel free to dislike it. Once more of this content in the future, I may do strategy games. Um, Hearts of Iron 4, EU4, and uh, Civ 6 games are on those lines. So if you're interested in any of those, the sub button. I also do random stuff. It usually goes up on Saturdays. This is probably going up on a Saturday, although I might mix it up and upload this on a weekday. But I do uploads every weekday as well as occasionally Saturdays. So if you're interested in any of this sort of stuff, hit the sub button. Have any comments, feedback, concerns, or suggestions for campaigns to play? Because I'm open to uh, playing some of these... Uh, different campaigns, because I do really like this game. I'll leave in the comment section below, I read all the comments again, appreciate any little feedback you might have for me. If you want to chat, play games of any sort, uh, check out my Discord. If you want to send me a box more in the month, check out my Patreon. If you want to see me do this sort of stuff live, check out my Twitch. This was filmed live on Twitch, actually. And if you want to see, uh, see me do non-gaming related content, so check out my second channel. All those links are down in the description box below. That's it for now, ladies and gentlemen. My name has been Mr. MrDogO333. I thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.